Okay, today we're going to be waxing the uh, front lower incisors, the mandibular lower incisors. So the first thing we have to do is replace the teeth that we're waxing with the dies. So number, we have number 22, 23, and 24. So we'll do 24 first. <clears throat> We're going to look at the die. So that's number 24. We're going to replace number 24 with the die. Make sure it fits down all the way so that the margins are below the gum line both the lingual and the buckle I'm gonna put some separating medium on there But let's not put too much because we don't want it to keep falling off. So put a little bit, then we'll wipe it off the fingers. So the first step as usual. We'll put a wax coping or a wax covering over the die. Make sure it's evenly covered. Make sure you can control the heat. Thin areas can be covered also. <clears throat> then we'll replace the die in the model. Incidentally, if you notice though there's curvatures here and curvatures there. Here the curvature in the mesial is less shallow than the curvature on the distal. So we're going to start the same way we did with the uppers. We're going to wax the um, mesial incisal point angle. Make sure it matches up with the adjacent central incisor. If you notice, these teeth are definitely sharper on the point angles than the uppers. But there is a slight amount of difference in the distal and the mesial. They're still sharper but the distal is still a little bit more rounded. And we go ahead and do the distal point angle. As 
So this one looks like it's a little bit higher than the lateral, but I think that's because these models are a little bit unstable. This should be a little bit higher up. Been pushed down a little bit too much. So the next step is we're going to do the incisal edge. Be connected <coughs> to the adjacent to it doesn't really matter too much. Then after the incisal edge, we'll do the mesial line angle. Then the distal line angle. If we notice, there's also a curvature here, like a slight S shape, like on the uppers. So that will have the uh, incisal edge a little bit wider than the gingival uh, area. Now we're doing the gingival height of contour. can look at it on the side make sure we didn't overbuild it then we look at it from the top so we can see that we could bring it out a little bit more a little too much so we can push it back before it gets too <coughs> too hot I mean too cold okay so now we'll do the um, central lobe let's correct the line angle a little bit here let's add to the line angle a little bit on the distal Just blend it together a little from the side and 
Now we'll do the lingual line angles. So we'll do the distal one. As we can notice, the uh, lingual fossa is uh, less detailed than the maxillary teeth. So we kind of do the same thing on it. First we do the line angles or the marginal ridges. You can refer to them as both. And then we'll do the cingulum, which is the bulbous area in the lingual. Then once we do that, we'll have a void in the middle there. So then we'll puddle that in, and that should be our concavity, or the start of it. So we'll let it cool a little bit, and we'll get some instruments out. can dig down a little bit, take some of the wax out to increase the depth of the lingual fossa. Then we can take the instrument, the waxer, and smooth it out again. Once we finish with this step, then we'll take the tooth out and refine the interproximals. See how it kind of came over the um, the margins, so we'll have to remove that. So now we'll take the instrument. Once this is uh, completely cool, we'll um, refine it, add where we need to add, take away where we need to take away from. Oh, it broke. I didn't wait for it to cool enough, so let's uh, put it back together. So you just basically take the instrument and run it along the crack line to fuse the crown back together. And then we'll have to wait for it to cool a little bit more before we start carving. You could use the uh, air hose to make the cooling process faster. But right now, when we carve this, we have to make sure we carve it very gently, otherwise we'll end up breaking it. Now, if you didn't put separator on the die, 
it will be a lot stronger so you won't be breaking it as much we will not have to remove these until the end so if you didn't put dye lube it's uh, just as well you see how it keeps coming off this is going to be a pain What I'm going to do is I'm going to seal the margin again to keep it from falling off too much. I'm going to melt the wax really into the dye by making the instrument hot, really hot. But you have to be careful not to melt the rest of the wax up if you're like almost done with it. We can blow on it a little bit, that'll hasten its uh, cooling process also. So, we go right back onto it and we'll start smoothing the wax. You see, the uh, margin has to be nice and perfect, nice and smooth. And if you notice, here it's a little bit over the margin. So we just slowly remove it. For the grading process, we're going to have to have an absolutely smooth margin, otherwise points come off. If you clean the margins well enough and you have your contours correctly designed, then the shape of the crown will be absolutely right. Now these curvatures need to be curved enough so that we can have the labial embrasures, the incisal embrasures here although they may be slight but they have to be there then the gingival embrasures will be coming from here and here and on these lower teeth sometimes you can put some anatomical depressions or structures to define the mammalons just don't do it too extremely just a little bit and kind of blend it with the instrument so if you can see the uh, anatomy look at the light ref reflection you can see the little structures there and then we put it back and see what it looks like and it's there this is our maxillary left central incisor number 24 the lingual aspect let's refine this a little bit more let's make this concavity a little bit more extreme like the uh, adjacent teeth And let's make sure that the marginal ridges here match the marginal ridge here on the adjacent tooth. This is number 23, 24, 25, and 26. 
So that's what we're going to be working on today. Sometimes you see the white spot here. That's inadequate preparation. So if you end up with a case like this in real life, you have to call the doctor and ask the doctor to either reprep the tooth or ask him if you can make that area thicker so that we can cover the preparation. Or you can ask him to if you can reduce the preparation and then mark it for him to reduce it when he gets the crown. And we go back and we smooth everything with the waxing instrument. That's your marginal ridges right there. And we have the fossa, the lingual fossa. Over here is a little bit uneven, so let's uh, correct that area right here. See, when you look at it from this angle, it's a little off. So let's add a little bit of length to the lingual portion. Since our incisal edge 